Welcome back to the Wizard's Yacht, and today's video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Let's get started. So yes, we finally get to do some yachting this weekend. It's kind of cool out, it's nice fall weather, and we're definitely getting some more yachting in before it's too cold. So while we're down here at the lake enjoying the nice fall scenery, I decided to do a video to help you guys out on six SUVs you should never, ever buy under any circumstance. I don't care what kind of deal you get. I don't care. Do not buy these six SUVs. Let's go ahead and get started. The first one is 2012 to 2022 Buick Encore with the 1.4 liter Ecotec Turbo. You guys just saw a video on that. We actually had it in the shop. And after we got done with it, the customer said, what I've heard so many times with these Encores, I'm trading this thing in. I've had it. I've had enough. This thing is going away. If that's the par for the course for this car, then that definitely means you should not buy one. The one that we had in the shop was actually time for its third turbo. It had already had one replaced at a dealership. It was an OEM dealer turbo at a dealership. It didn't even last but a year and a half, two years, and it was out again. This is one of the deciding factors that the customer said, enough. They also have battery issues, charging system issues, and this one was no exception. We had to put a new battery in it, and it took care of some of the issues with the charging system. And it was back online again. It was drivable again but it still needed another turbo. I believe the customer said when they had it replaced last, it was two or three grand to have a turbo put in. And if you're doing that every two years, oh my goodness, that's horrible. So I reiterate again on this car, every single one that I've had in the shop, the customer is dumping it after we find out everything that's wrong. Don't get yourself caught in that situation. Don't walk away from the Encore, run. Now, before we move on to SUV number two, let's go ahead and hear a word from Simply Safe. Have you ever experienced your car being broken into? I have, and this is not something I want to experience in my house. Simply Safe gives me peace of mind to know that there's a line of defense now. Simply Safe is an easy to use, customizable home security system that is free from contracts and hidden costs. Systems are shipped right to your door, where you can set them up on your own and in record time. Your home is monitored 24-7 with the ability to check in at any moment right from your phone. The setup process was way easier than I expected. No major drilling or cutting was required and it was very easy to use. The outdoor camera took just two screws and my whole yard was in view. The interactive monitoring service will call the police if alerted to anything. Their team will always on professionals are easily reachable and always keep lines of communication open for the most protective service. Visit simplysafe.com slash wizard to learn more and to get at least 30% off your Simply Safe security system. So now we're going to move on to SUV number two. It is the 2006 to 2017 Jeep Patriot or Compass. I know there's a lot of Jeep guys out there that are really into Jeeps, but these ones are not the ones to buy. They're very unreliable and they don't age well. When the miles start racking up on these things, they just drop like flies. It's really, really bad. They have major CVT transmission issues. I know of one that actually was on the third transmission in 120,000 miles. This was another instance where the customer said, I'm dumping this thing, I've had enough. But based on the transmission issues alone, I would say don't buy one of these, but there's more. The engine that's in these is called the World Engine. I think it's called Ingenium or something like that. I'm not sure the name of the engine, what they originally called it, but it's very loud, very unrefined, and very underpowered. That's one of the biggest complaints I've heard from the Compass and Patriot owners is that the engine just sounds like it's going to fly apart, and you're really not going that fast. It's just Bleh! It sounds really, really bad. It's not an upper-level car. Therefore, it has bottom level engine transmission and parts. So the engine noise is not going to affect performance or anything, but it just, it sounds really bad. 
many many customers I've had that have these cars say that's one of the biggest complaints that even though it doesn't really hurt anything they felt like they didn't get what they paid for just the way it sounds when they drive it now the interior on these really don't hold up well it's all the cheap plastics base level bottom level switches buttons everything is absolute bottom level so when you get one that's got a hundred thousand miles on it the interior is kind of like when you order something on wish and it arrives and it is not what you ask for that's kind of like what it is inside of these jeeps you just after so many miles you're like wow i didn't expect that it would fall apart so fast this thing is really going downhill so don't do it guys don't get a patriot or a compass even though i do like the looks of the patriot i think it's a neat looking suv but based on those things I just mentioned, even I wouldn't buy one. Now, SUV number three is going to be any of the Ford Expedition or Excursion with the 5.4... What, what, what? The 5.4 three-valve? No way! Yes, that one, guys. You guys have heard me banter about it on multiple different videos in the past, how not to buy them on trucks, not to buy them at all on any vehicle. We actually have a video just about that three-valve. Yes, guys, it really is that bad. One of the common things that I have found over the years is customers think, well, that don't apply to me. I think I'll buy the one that I found on Facebook Marketplace, and I think I'll get lucky. I'll think I'll be all right on this one. And then they get hammered. And the engine shells, it goes out, seven grand, and they're like, oh my goodness, I should have listened to Car Wizard. You're not going to get lucky. You're not going to find a good one. There are no good ones. They are all trash. Now, I do say there are a few out there that have had religious oil changes or services where the inside of the engine is so clean and spotless you could eat off of. I suppose that that one may be an okay one to use, but it's still a used truck or an SUV, so how much longer will it last? There's no one that's going to give you any kind of guarantee on a 5.43 valve. This engine is the second to the worst engine ever behind the North Star V8. It is really that bad. I personally in my shop, whether it be when I was a tech for another shop or in my own shop, I have replaced 15 of these at $7,000 a pop. Now it does fix it. Every time we put a new engine in, it has the upgraded oil pump, timing chain, I also go through and drill the passageways through the block and everything larger with a gun drill. This is the way I've heard one of the remanufacturing companies I talk to. Once I do those things, it's okay. But the one you're looking at on the lot right now, unless it's had a new reman engine put in it, it doesn't have those upgrades. These engines have cam phaser, timing chain, oil pressure problems, and that's what usually grenades the motors. They start clacking and knocking and making noises. People don't really want to fix it, so they just drive it until finally the timing chain breaks loose or the cam phaser breaks and completely ruins that side of the motor. Now, I just mentioned I've done 15 of these. Every single time that I replaced one of these engines for a customer, it was utter devastation of their finances. I can remember three or four couples where the wife was actually in tears. It's like, this, this is crazy. We don't have $7,000 right now. You will be the next one. You will be the next one. Don't buy those guys. Please listen to me on that one. Now, the fourth SUV, Mrs. Wizard and I have actually had one before, but it wasn't for very long before we got rid of it. 2006 to 2010 Jeep Commander. Do you remember that one, Mrs. Wizard? Oh yeah, that thing was terrible. It rained on top of us, literally on top of us. Yes, it was really bad. Now, with these particular models, the engine isn't so much the issue, whether it's a 3.7 or the Hemi 5.7 or whatever kind of engine you get in it. The engine's not so much the problem. It's the rest of the vehicle. Just like Mrs. Wizard mentioned, it rained on her. So many people with these with a the sunroof say that every time it rains, it's literally more water dripping on them in their face than there is raining outside. It just collects it all around the sunroof and then dumps it in your face, on your lap. You can clean the sunroof drains and it doesn't take very much and they're clogged again. When are they going to get clogged again? I'll tell you when. The next time it rains and it dumps all over you again. These have the quadra track or transfer case issues, it's a very, very common failure. Especially if you get 
one or two tires that go bad on your vehicle, you put a different brand or a, just a slightly smaller size tire on them and they don't all match, you will destroy your transfer case doing that. I know a guy that's a, one of the head technicians at a local Chrysler dealership and he said that they go through transfer cases over and over and over and every time they replace one they take a look at the tires and they're mismatched different sizes. Somebody thought I'll be cheap, I'll save a few bucks, I'll put a smaller tire up front, it's just a little bit smaller, it ain't gonna hurt anything, I don't have more money in my pocket. But after they replace their transfer case they're like oh now I don't have more money in my pocket. That was a bad move. These also have bad issues with clunking. You go to put it in gear or you take off and clunk, clunk. And it's usually your differential mounts up front. There's little circular mounts in the differential that go bad. And I replaced them on our commander that we had and it wasn't too hard. It was just kind of time consuming. But again, it just keeps racking up the bill. It's these little things that's here and there and there and there and there. It's like, when is this going to stop? And they also have exhaust leak issues that are very, very hard to fix on these vehicles. I actually had one customer complain to me that he had $9,000 in repairs on a Jeep Commander that he purchased for $7,500. He was like, this is stupid. And I said, yes, this is very stupid. You shouldn't have done that. So don't buy a Jeep Commander. SUV number five is 2001 to 2008 Chevy Trailblazer. Yes, those Trailblazers. Again, this is another SUV where the engine is not really so much of the problem. They do have some issues with these engines here or there, but they're not nightmare Ford 5.43 valve problems. But it's the rest of the vehicle. Again, like the Jeep Patriot, the interiors on these really fall apart fast. So many of these are brought into the shop, the exterior looks okay, you know, it's not too bad, but then I go and get inside of it and pull it into the shop, and it's just like, what happened to the interior? It's like a hurricane went through it. It's destroyed. All the fabrics, all the materials, all the buttons, all the switch gear are the cheapest that they can put into the vehicle. Any kind of wear or tear, if you have kids or anything like that that are rough on the interior, it is not going to last. These have HVAC actuators in the dash that go bad. And you guys have heard one, some of my crazy story videos where one customer refused to allow me to do the actuators in his 2002 Trailblazer because the whole dash had to come out. And I showed him the little piece and it was like a $40 actuator and he screamed at me. I'm not spending over $1,000 for a $40 plastic gear. Sorry, then don't. And he didn't. These are very common on these to fail. Usually the SUV as a whole, when you go to look at one on the lot, is usually clapped out. These are the Chevy Cavaliers of the SUV world. People have bought these and abused them because they don't care about the vehicle. They run into the ground. They're not worth fixing. And now you're going to be the next owner. So do not buy the Trailblazers, guys. They're just, they're really bad. And SUV number six, which you guys already know about, is any Chevy Traverse, GMC Acadia, or Buick Enclave. Don't buy any of them. You say, well, which years are the worst? I would say all of them. Don't buy none of them. These SUVs are known to have multiple, multiple electrical failures, whether it be inside the dash, the transmission, power windows, I mean, this everything electrical on these, again, are the cheapest that they can put in there. It's really, really bad as far as electrical goes. And they also have the third worst engine in history, and it is the Chevy 3.6. You guys know about those. They're in Cadillacs, they're in Buicks, they're in Chevys. G they're in multiple different General Motors vehicles. And there's just timing chains after timing chain after timing chain. Everyone that I've worked on has either had timing chains replaced or is in need of new timing chains when it has codes that come up that say camshaft, crankshaft correlation because the chains are stretched or things are going wrong inside the timing system and it is an engine out job. And it's usually four grand, six grand, somewhere around in there. It's ridiculously high to do these. These also have steering rack issues. I've had multiple in the shop where the steering feels wonky or it feels wishy-washy or they're leaking out of the rack. And I explain to the customer that there's an issue and they say, yes, this is the second one. 
I've already had the rack replaced. It's like, whoa, this is obviously an issue with these vehicles. They also have transmission issues as far as solenoids or slipping, things going on. We don't rebuild transmissions in my shop, so if you want me to tell you all the internal parts that are bad in there, I don't know. I don't tear those things apart. But multiple customers I've had have said, yes, I've had the transmission rebuilt 50,000 miles ago. Of all three of these, Traverse, Acadia, Enclave, every single customer that I have worked on has said, I regret buying these. I will never, ever buy another one. So based on those experiences, when it always turns out so negative, time after time after time, I can say with authority that you should not buy any of those three SUVs I just listed. Buy a Toyota. Okay, Toyota Wizard, so you just gave some really great advice, but um, isn't that actually going to hurt the long run for the shop? No, I don't think it'll hurt the shop, and even if I lost a few dollars off of that, I think that would be fine because I really hate what it does to people. I, I'm one of those people that when I see someone crying, I kind of feel that way inside as well. And I've been through this so many times with the SUVs that I just listed that I would willingly go without making the profit on those vehicles if people would just stop buying them. I like fixing cars. Every car breaks. I like making money off of fixing cars. But when they do what they do to these people, like I just listed, that's no longer something I want to cash in on when it's devastating people's lives. That's, that's crap is what that is. It's garbage. So I'm glad you guys could tune in today and check out some of the six SUVs you should never buy while we're out here yachting. It'll be very valuable information for you guys because I have concrete shop evidence to back up all of my claims on these vehicles. I'm not based off of one person's ownership or something I read on the internet. This is first-hand knowledge in the field experience on all these vehicles. And it's not just on two or three of them, it's hundreds of them. So before you go, make sure to click the link in the description below for simplysafe.com slash wizard to get up to 30% off of your security system. I really recommend the security system, guys. It's very, very good. The, the SUVs I just listed are really bad, but this security system is really good. Also, make sure to click the Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. We really appreciate it. And also hit the subscribe button because there's so many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.